I think what helped get me clean is when I went to jail, the very next day my son passed away. The day after I went to jail, this time before. So and you were inside? When I was inside. Happened. They wouldn't let me go to the funeral. They, I don't have any closure on that. I haven't seen the, I didn't get to go to the funeral. They wouldn't, nothing, like mm. in, nothing. They did nothing for me. I didn't, nothing. <laughs> Couldn't get a furlough. Uh, Ross Spicer said, absolutely not. You are not going. It's crazy how all that come to a head right at that certain point, though, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. It was, that was when they came and told me my son passed away. <sighs> Welcome to the channel, and today we speak with Jennifer Franklin. Now, I have known Jennifer for many, many years. Jennifer and I used to use and know a lot of the same people that did use. Now, Jennifer started out, as many people do, not wanting to use. She did not want to use the drugs that she's seen all of her friends using. And eventually, she fell to peer pressure like most of us do. Um, she talks about one of her largest regrets being the fact that she was in jail when her son died. And she was unable to attend the funeral. She has been unable to watch the video of the funeral up to this point. So I know that's got to be super hard for Jennifer Mann. Um, she tells us a lot about how life was then and how life is now, man. And that's what these videos are about. The possibility of getting out of addiction and not living that life anymore. So if YouTube could actually monetize this video, that would be great. So sit back and relax. Enjoy this episode of Chopping It Up. I'm ready. All right, maybe. I don't really know. I'm glad you edit it. Yeah, yeah. I can edit anything else you don't like. <laughs> so welcome. Hey. Thank you for coming. I'm really excited to be here, really. Right. Excited and I've nervous. I've been excited. Excited and nervous. Yeah, yeah. I get it, man. I get it. <laughs> yeah. So uh, let's talk about Jenny a little bit. Introduce yourself. Tell us about you. Tell us your age and okay, where you're from. Okay, so I'm Jennifer Franklin. I'm 52. I'm born and raised in Winchester. Everybody knows me. Um... I don't know where to start, Jamie. <laughs> okay, so let's start with like childhood. How was your childhood? I had a mom? great childhood, great childhood. Um, my father passed away when I was young. Um, he had heart problems, so my mom raised me and my sister. I have a sister, but we had a great childhood. She made sure we had everything. Like she was a very good provider. Um, I ended up getting pregnant at a young age. Well, not young. I was eighteen when I got pregnant with my son. So I had him, and then I had my daughter when I was twenty-one. When I was twenty-one. So we found out my son was sick. This is uh, this is more where a lot of I, I can't say that this is where my life made a really bad turn, but I found out that my son, when he was five, he had muscular dystrophy. Okay. Um at that time I was married to Jamie Franklin. Um we found out he was sick, that he probably he only had the life expectancy of fourteen. He was gonna stop walking when he was at early well, he actually stopped walking when he was eight. They said he would stop walking when he was like twelve. So he stopped walking when he was eight, and that's kind of where a lot of my I don't want to say I don't want to say that you don't want to blame. I don't want to blame him. But I this don't. Is, this is where you started using. This is exactly when I started using. Um, so how are you coping with life and dealing with all that before using? Like, is there a certain? I, I mean, everything was great. Like, I didn't. I would. I, I didn't get high. Like everybody around me was getting high. You know, they were smoking crack. I wasn't getting high. I just started, I like started taking pain pills because my back, you know, my back was hurting. So I started taking a couple of pain pills and then we got into the Oxycontins, mm -hmm. you know, the story. Mm -hmm. He was there. So this has <laughs> to be like nineties, right? Yeah. You're that was the nineties. Nineties at the, well, no, I got married in 2000. So end of the nineties. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cause oxys for me was, I mean, I robbed a pharmacy in 98. <laughs> yeah. So this was, had to be right. 96 or so when they come around, but they were still really strong in the early 2000s. Right, yeah. So are were. you getting prescriptions? Are you no, buying them from the street? I was buying them off the street. I had someone that I was getting from, and then she passed away. So then I had an uncle that was getting them, so he gave them to me cheap, and then I started selling them. So what were you paying for oxys? I was only, they were 80s, and I was only paying $20, but I was selling them anywhere from 50 to, I mean, the guy that, one guy I was selling them to, he hit the lottery. So I got a lot of his money. I could sell them to him for a hundred, hundred, just one mm. a day. So, right. so that that's what fed my habit. And then my uncle passed away. So then there was no more oxies. So then, of course, that's when the heroin came in and the trips to Baltimore and and my son was just getting sicker and, but but I had to, I had to like I didn't want to be sick. He was in the hospital. He started going to the hospital a lot. Um. He stopped walking. 
I was at the hospital. He went into cardiac arrest. One time I was in the hospital for 38 days. I was selling dope out of the hospital, out of the ICU. Like, I never left the hospital when he was sick for 38, for 38 days. I never left, but I was still feeding my habit. I was selling. Actually, my husband came up there and OD'd in the hospital, in the ICU. He hit the nurse. He ended up catching a charge. They locked down the ICU unit. I'm in there. You know, I have all this dope. I'm selling dope out of the hospital. Like, it was crazy, but I just kept doing it. Like, I just couldn't stop. I got into the methadone, and and then that's when the coke and the crack came in because mm -hmm. I wanted to get high, but I still was, you know, trying to take care of my son, and then I just, like, disappeared. I disappeared from my daughter. I disappeared. Like, my daughter's dad just came and took her from me, and just everything went to shit. Like, I started going to jail. That's when, you know, I started hanging out with Pukey, and they were mm -hmm. showing me how to steal, and you know, wall on, you know, just run in, take a TV, so it was like any, run out the door. And I'm like, you could find to, to keep further in the habit, right? Any way to make more money. Yeah. yeah. Sell it and get some free, steal yeah. to have more. Yeah. You know, the routine. And the whole time I had a sick child and then I had a daughter that her father just come and took her. And I just, I just let him, like, I just let him. Felt and, like it was less responsibility at the time. It was going to make things easier. <sighs> That, and I don't think I couldn't maintain my drug habit and go to Baltimore every day, two and three times a day. Mm -hmm. I had to make trips to Baltimore. I couldn't be home with my kids where I should have been because I had a sick child. I had a daughter that was taken, and I couldn't. I couldn't stop. So and I was depressed, and it hurt. Like, it hurt bad, but I just couldn't. I had to go to Baltimore every day. I had to sell. I had to. I just had to. More for the habit of not. I didn't want to be sick. I just, right. The sickness was horrible. You know that. I right, mean, right. So and you I think just, that's what it was mainly about, though, is you just, whatever I got to do to not be sick. To not be sick. As long as I can look in my hand and see 50 pills, I'm not going to And then you're sick. on top of the world and everything is great and nothing else matters. <laughs> yeah, and then you just, goes. it's, I don't know, Jamie, it's crazy, like. <sighs> it's wild how your brain works, right? Yeah. Like how you get caught up in that, that how, cycle. How do you go from being like a perfect mother to your kids to just not even care? And it's not that I didn't care. I did. Because it changes you, right? It changes your The drugs inside. changed me. The drugs changed me extremely. Yeah. Like It I takes was... your soul. Buddy said it takes your soul. Yeah. And when he said that, I was like, I never heard that before, but it does. Yeah, it does. Because it made me a whole different person. I did I would never do today. Yeah. Never do sober, not even today. Yeah. And then when I went, the worst part of it, I think what helped get me clean is when I went to jail, the very next day my son passed away. The day after I went to jail, this time before, so and you were inside. When I was inside. Happened. They wouldn't let me go to the funeral. They, I don't have any closure on that. I haven't seen the. I didn't get to go to the funeral. They wouldn't. Nothing like mm. in, nothing. They did nothing for me. I didn't nothing. <laughs> Couldn't get a furlough. Ross Spicer said absolutely not. You are not going. It's crazy how all that come to a head right at that certain point, though, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. It was that was when they came and told me my son passed away. So, uh, I was in prison when Wendy passed, which was my child's mother. Mm -hmm. About mm -hmm. nine o'clock at night, captain's come and get me. We need you in the captain's office, blah, blah, blah. Take me in there. There's the chaplain tells me that she's dead. Mm -hmm. So I know what that feels like. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. you have no control. And I had nobody, like nobody even reached out to me. I was in there and I was in phase one, you know, coming off dope, coming off meth. Like it was horrible and nobody not even my family. Nobody reached out to me. Nobody, like nothing. I got no closure on that. It's been five years, and I still have not been able to watch the video of my son's funeral. I can't do it. Hmm. Cannot. It's tough. Yeah, it is tough. It is tough. And now I'm trying to build a relationship with my daughter. I've been clean. You know, I've done everything, like everything I can. I'm just trying to build a relationship with her now. And she lives in England. She's in the Air Force. She has two beautiful. How old is she? She's 31. 30? 31? Jamie. Oh, no. How's that going, though? Do you feel like you're building that relationship? Um, I do at times, but she's hard. She's a hard one. Like, I let her down. I let her down a lot. And I know it hurts because it hurts me every day. But... And I've worked, I mean, I've been out of prison July, I'll be off probation and out of prison July 8th, be three years. I'm done, you know, I've made it through my probation, no problem. So I feel like I've proved myself, 
you know, the things I've done, I've proved myself. I've, you know, got my license, my car, mm -hmm. I've had the same job. Prison changed me. It really changed me. They should have sent me to prison a long time ago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wish they would have sent me to prison a long time ago, but. So what did you go to prison for? Um, I had five possessions when they got me. I had a warrant and somebody set me up, of course. And when I was coming out of the motel, there they were. So then I had meth on me. Well, then the meth tested positive for MDMA. So I got possession of that, possession of meth. Well, I had heroin in my bra and I didn't, I did not want to them to get the heroin. So I took it into the jail with me mm. and they kept me handcuffed and I was high and they brought two female guards in and they stripped me and I had it in my bra. So I took, so I got a prisoner possession because, well, actually they didn't get it. It kind of fell. And then Miss Tanabay, of course, found it because it was stuck on the side of my boob. <laughs> so I got a prisoner possession. Mm -hmm. So then with that charge, I wasn't able to get a contract bed at the jail, which I would have loved to stay at the jail. But with prisoner possession, you cannot get a okay. contract bed. So I had to go to prison. So you go through everything here locally as far as court and everything. Yeah. And then yeah. they sentenced you to what? Two years and nine months. Okay. Mm-hmm. And then by the time you go to jail or prison, how much time do you have in jail? Um, I think I was I was in jail almost a year, I think, before I got sentenced. But when I went to prison, it was in the middle of COVID. So I got stuck in receiving for eight months. So I remember seeing you at COVID, right? When, yeah, on the court van. Okay, so that was, that was, when I went in was a Tuesday, and that Friday was when we had no toilet paper. The whole world was... <laughs> chaos yeah. with, with toilet paper then two weeks after that friday was when i was supposed to go into court and they did the little thermometer yeah, thing and he yeah. wasn't going to let and they me weren't going to let you on the van right no y'all yeah. was like what are y'all yeah. doing let him on let the van, the van. they're like what should we let him on the van i was like let him on the van right that's what i was like dude i'm going home <laughs> yeah, today. all you gotta home. do is get me to court i'm going to fuck home i was like you gotta let me on the van you check me again and yep. let me back on so that was before you went in or before you went to prison, where were you at on that state? Then? Okay, well, I went. That's the charges that I went on in on. But then, they, remember, they releasing everybody for COVID. Okay, so this was yeah, this was right in twenty twenty, March of two twenty. Yep, oh, yep, right. yep. Okay. I got released in March of two of twenty twenty because they releasing everybody because of COVID. So then when I got out, um, I got on a bond, on a bond, and um, that was just one p possession charge. But then when I got out, like everything was shut down. The only thing that was open was the dope man. I mean, you didn't even have to go to probation. You didn't have to go to pretrial. Like, what were you supposed to do? Right. <laughs> what were you supposed to do? Hmm. So that's the only thing at COVID was open was the dope man. So then I ended up racking up five more. While I was on bond, I caught five more possessions. And then I got that prisoner possession at that time, too. And then he locked you back so up. So they locked me back up. What year was this? Still 2020? That was 2020. That was June of 2020. So it was only a couple months. Yeah. So I was out a couple months. And yeah. I got locked back up June of 2020, mm -hmm. and then I ended up going to prison in March. No, it was about a year later because I was in receiving. I got stuck in receiving for eight months, and, you know, we couldn't even order TVs. We couldn't. So we receiving couldn't at what prison? Um, Flupano, maximum security. Virginia State System, right? Yeah, it was maximum security prison. Why max? Um, it was receiving. Okay, so the, yeah, okay, gotcha. Yeah, and then. I ended up getting stuck there because I had hepatitis and I had to do the treatment. Really? So, yeah. So I did the treatment there. It was a 28 day pill. So they wouldn't let me go to Goochland. I had to stay at a medical part because I was on that. So I ended up staying in Flu. I was in a Fluvanna for like nine months. By the time I got to Goochland, I was there three weeks and then they did the early release and I was one of the first ones out for the early release. Hmm. Yeah. And then ever since then, everything's, changed <laughs> right so when the, so they moved you from that prison to where from, uh goochland okay goochland, where and is I, that um, never even heard of that one before goochland, that went virginia. right by it's me goochland virginia it's, never even heard of that bro that just tells you everything about virginia goochland you never heard where would of you goochland? at using goochland you've never heard of a women's goochland <laughs> first prison. time right really? now i swear to god all so, of us females go there right well i never i've never it's heard like that a before. big college campus Okay. Like it's a big campus. So, it, it was great. The food was it was great. But I never even made it out of um the receiving there. I was mm. there for three weeks and then the, they came and were like, Oh, you get out next week. You got the early release. So you never got so everything you're doing is basically lockdown. You never got the benefits. No, no, no. So everybody was like, Oh, wait till you get to prison, you'll love mm -hmm. it. It was miserable. I did get to go to quarantine because I had um COVID. I ended up getting COVID and went to quarantine. So I did make it to kind of with the general pop girls. Oh my gosh, Jamie, those girls were reckless. They were wow. it was a maximum security prison, so you can imagine they even had one of the guards literally locked in one of the cells. They robbed a medical cart five times in one day. They took every 
needle, every uh, Wellbutrin. Like these girls were going crazy over Wellbutrin. Like it was crazy. Wellies. They called them wellies. wellies. And loved them. They was loved them. And they had them on the cart and they stole everything off them carts. And then girls throwing mat, going in girls cells and just throwing their shit out over top of the thing. And I'm just like, oh. I just stayed they to myself. Were, that right, they was wilding out. They like were that, wilding so. out. I mean, a lot of them had um life sentences. Okay. It was a max security right, prison. So. They didn't gave no fucks. They, they like they lock ran the shit. For that? No, they... absolutely not. No, them girls ran that prison. That's ran crazy. It. Yeah, it kind of scared me. So I was kind of like glad I'd make it to general pop. <laughs> I was like, if this would happen, I don't want to go out there. Yeah, man, it's definitely. I some seen them fight on the rec yards. Like, just they were crazy. Those girls are crazy there. Like, stabbing each other, mm-hmm. just fist fighting. Just crazy fighting, stabbing. One of the girls, one of the girls that went down with us, ended up getting cut over stealing somebody's drugs or something, and they cut them. Or it was crazy. It just brutal. It was crazy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think it changes everything about you, though. Like you yeah. put a bunch of a bunch of crazy women that have already mm-hmm. committed crimes, and you put them in that situation, like, and expect it not to be chaotic. Yeah, your expectations are off. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. It was crazy. But. So you come home from prison, man. Like, uh, how does that tell? Tell how's that feel? Like, you know, what I mean, um, up to those days, you got thirty days left. You're clicking them days off. What before I got out? Yeah, like I me. didn't even. Well, I didn't even know. I wasn't even supposed to get out till November. So you're click, so I didn't you're even thinking know. it's going to be a long way. Yeah, away. well, I knew that they were doing the early release, and I knew that they told me that, I, but they hadn't given us our release dates yet. So we were kind of thinking maybe around July 1st because that's when the law went into effect. But no, the first round went out at July 8th. So they told me literally 10 days before my release date that so I was getting So up to that 10 days, you think you have... November, till November. Right. Yeah, I literally even had all my teeth pulled because in prison, if you have more than a year of sentence, you can get all your teeth pulled and get your teeth done. So okay. I was like, hell yeah, I'm going to go to prison and get and my teeth done. And they pay for that. And they do all that. So Sweet. they pull all my teeth and then they release me. So I had got them. No, I didn't even get them. I didn't have any teeth. They released me with no got teeth. Oh. I was like, "Are you kidding me?" So then it took me four months after I got home to even get teeth. Yeah, they released me with no teeth. They pulled all of them and then just, just because of where it fell. Like if you would have went two weeks later or something, you wouldn't have had that. What do you mean? Just because your release because date my release fell date, right yeah. in the middle right. of what they were doing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Huh. So they had just pulled them, and then they released me. So I come home with no teeth. So I was depressed. Oh, like, so you were sad about that, but you're I mean, home. I was sad about that, and I was but too home. But I was home, and I was 250 right. pounds. Mm, jail sucks for gaining weight. Oh, my gosh. I was 250 pounds. I had no teeth. I was just in the bedroom, miserable for, not like, about two months. About yourself. No, absolutely not. And I'll you. tell you, my cousin, she has been my biggest supporter, and she, if it wasn't for her, I probably would never got out of bed. Tell you the truth, but she got me up, and you know you got to get this done. You gotta got you just got to. Here's the number for this, or just get your license. Mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. so she helped me a lot. And sometimes it takes that push, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And then I ended up just like kind of staying with her because she doesn't do any type of drugs. She doesn't. So be right. just being around all that with all them and not doing, you know, not hearing about the drugs, not dealing with the drugs. Like I just. I made it. People, people <laughs> places and things. Yeah. And I always thought I could get out and just go around and people be like, nah, I don't want to use that. I remember yeah. coming home in 2000 and it wasn't three or four days before while I was sitting on my toilet shooting coke. <laughs> and I'm like, what am I even doing, bro? Like, where did my life go this right. crazy that you're sitting there shooting cocaine on my f- toilet <laughs> and I'm on probation and I think this is okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's what we used to do. But... No, now I, I could never imagine being like that ever again. Like right. how we used to be. Like I could never, I would never go back to something like that. I could never imagine my life being like that. I'm, I mean, I'm not perfect by any means, mm-hmm. but I've come I've come a long way and I'm real proud of myself. Nothing you miss about it. Oh, no, not nothing. one thing. No, nothing. I mean, there's people that I miss, you know, Raymond, Raymond passed away. Mm. Like he was a big part of my life. Like. But I knew, I mean, I knew that was going to happen for him. I knew. I just didn't know when. Just like with with Steven, you know, we knew it was going to happen. Just didn't know when. I was expecting that call for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Last time I seen Raymond, I seen him in sheets. I was getting gas. He walked up to me and he looked me right in the face. He said, well, you don't look strung out. (laughs) I was like, I'm not, dude. How you doing, bro? And he didn't look very good. No, no. And then now his son's out there in California just doing the same. Just living homeless been homeless for years like try to get him to come back i mean he doesn't even call anymore but 
the next call I'll get it will be that he's dead too. Damn, that sucks, man. It does suck. Like, like he's right there on the skid row. Yeah. Type yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah dude, living man. in tents on the street. Just uh, the dope is so prevalent right there. Like they go right around the corner and get a. Yeah. A, and they're all pressed. I None mean, they, yeah. And then dope. they have it's the shooting pressed. galleries. Raymond would go in the gallery, little shooting spots that they'd have people to watch to make sure that you wouldn't fall out. But and give you needles. And give you needles. <laughs> give you clean syringes. Give you mm -hmm. clean cottons. Yeah. And call it prevention. But that, but Raymond loved that life. That's what he loved to do. And I just, I knew it was going to happen. There was a certain glow in his eyes when it comes to that type of wasn't it? Yeah. Bright blue eyed Raymond. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I remember Raymond from a long time ago, boy. I remember Stephen was going to kill him one time. <laughs> I think everybody was going to kill Raymond <laughs> at one point in time. I, I probably saved his life that day. Uh, something had happened between him and the girl that Steven was with and Steven found out and we was in that trailer out on Forgotten Lane. And uh as soon as Steven found out, choke slammed him right on the kitchen floor. I mean, oh, I, his head hit the ceiling and there, boom. Uh, and he was beating on him and I I'm just I like I'm like, no, cannot fight. No, he couldn't fight a drop. He couldn't no. fight a drop. <laughs> and Steve was just beating the shit out of him and I I pulled Steven off of him, chased Raymond out the house, like, get the out the door so you can run, dude. <laughs> <laughs> and I got him apart and Steve was pissed at me because I broke him up. I was like, dude, I was not going to let you pound his whole face <laughs> in right here on our kitchen floor. Because I know what you're getting ready to do. I'm not yeah. going to do that. Mm. Poor Raymond, man. RIP to both of them, bro. Yeah. It's crazy how many people we've watched go yeah. through that. And, and you know, some of us made it to this side. Mm -hmm. And some of us made it to the other side of all right. of that, man. And I feel like now that I'm clean and like you, like, I just want to help everybody. And a lot of times I find myself in the hole because of it, but I just feel like I have to try and help everybody for some reason. I don't know why. I just want to help everybody. God, it's so hard to draw the line <laughs> sometimes too, isn't it? Yeah, and I mean sometimes people take from me and take from me, and then they call back, and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna. And it's help hard you for again. me to say no. Like uh, I can't say no, and I shouldn't be saying this. I know, right? right. It <laughs> I is though. Be saying this. But at the same time, too, man, if, if they're taking advantage of you, there has to be a cutoff point. Yeah, you know, there has to be. But I'm with you, like. How many people tried to help you? How many people right. tried to help me? Right. And we took to it when we took to it. You never yeah. know which one of those times is going to be the time they're going to take to it, right? right? Right. Yeah. I asked to do the same question a while back. I was like, when do you just give up on them, bro? Like, when do you just say, I'm done? I, I can't keep on doing this with you. And right. he's like, I never give up on them. I never give up on them. I always just tell them what I can tell them and try to help them in best I can without hurting myself. Right. Yeah. So what's yes. life like today? Like, what um, do you do today that keeps you clean? Um, I just work. I've had the same job. My boss is awesome. I work over at Amherst Diner. Well, it's Lynette and Jerry's Diner. It used to be Amherst Diner. I love it. You come in there and eat all the time. Mm -hmm. And they're they're great people. They're really great people. My bosses, they're great. I love them. <laughs> um, they've helped me a lot. And just the supportive atmosphere. And they know your background and everything. Oh, supportive yeah. Oh, of that yeah. stuff too, Very right? supportive. Very supportive. It's hard to find that in a big company too, right? Yeah. Like if it was Walmart, they wouldn't give a about that. Right. But being in a small little bit. I love small businesses, yeah. man. I want to do everything I can. Now. That's why I show up to them yeah. places because I want to support that more than I want to support. I mean, I like Waffle House too. Yeah. <laughs> just because of the people that are in there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Same as y'all. I come in there and talk to y'all because mm -hmm. it's like, you know, I know who I'm going in there to see. Right. And we're there. We're always right. there. But, um, yeah, so I work a lot. Um, and then when I get off work, I just help people. <laughs> a lot of my friends need rides. They don't drive. So I give a lot of people rides, like, to probation. But nothing, no crazy stuff. It's got to mm -hmm. be clean, legit. You can't get in my car with no shit because a couple of times I let people in my car and and then I look around and there's a needle on the floor. Mm. So, yeah. And that's and when I tell you, when you get in my car, don't have no like that, and then I find a needle in my car. Right, it's that. Yeah, it's very disrespectful for right. one, and yeah. What if but, you got pulled over and exactly the cops found that? Oh yeah. Instead of and, yeah. and the part is the person that dropped the needle. I've already taken a needle charge for this person. Mm. Yeah. So when he got the car, I was like, "We're not going to do this again." So make sure you're clean. And I be some of a he didn't leave a needle in my car. Yeah. Like it fell out of his pocket. I guess he had a book bag. Son of a. Yeah. I should call his ass out. He's locked up, but <laughs> right. But you, that's I think that's where the line comes. Yeah, you got to draw that line yeah. there and be like, bro, do I got to pat you down? Yeah, like, what the so, f 
Oh, you will never get back in my car. Ever. Right, right. So there's the line. Ever. I'm just yeah. not going to do it anymore. That's yeah. an even better line than patting them down. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm just not. You're just not getting in my car. So. But you enjoy helping people. Like, I do. Right. I really do. And I spend a lot of my time doing that. And a lot of people are like, oh, yeah, people are taking advantage of you. And they might be, but I know how it is not to have a car, or, you know, so I just help people out. But, you know, if you want to go to probation or whatever, I'll give you a ride. Or mm -hmm. if you need a job or ride to work or try to get a job, I'll help you. So that's just what I do, basically. Right. Yeah, all evening. <laughs> yeah, I think there's something satisfying. It satisfies me to help people when I see them come out of it mm -hmm. and I see them get to the other side, whatever it is, get a job, get this, yeah. whatever they needed. And they, mm -hmm. they, yeah, there's something satisfying in that. Yeah. I you got to replace all that dope with something, don't you? Yeah. Do you feel like you got to replace, like, because we, we had such a chaotic life. We yeah. did all day long uh -huh. from the time we got up to the time we went to bed. We were chasing or thinking mm -hmm. about chasing. Or we were selling or hustling or doing something. Mm -hmm. So it's like, do you just sit and chill now? Are you busy all the time? I'm busy all the time. Right. And I smoke a lot of weed. <laughs> I feel like that translates, doesn't it? Yeah. It translates right over because mm -hmm. I'm the same way. I'm busy 14 hours a day yeah. most of the time and I smoke a lot of weed. Yeah. Yep. That's <laughs> what I do. I smoke a lot of weed and I stay busy all the time. Hmm. I used so, to door dash a lot, but I don't really do that a whole lot anymore. But I used to do that. How do you feel the weed helps you? How do how do you think that's... It's crazy because I never liked to smoke weed. It always made me paranoid, my heart pound, you know. It was worse than cocaine. So I never got into it. So then... So when, when I, you were using big drugs, you yeah, didn't like I, it? No, no, absolutely okay. not. I never smoked weed. No, do it's not. It's weird. I think there's a big separation between pod yeah. heads and hard drug heads. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, very rarely did the guy that has fentanyl pills or cocaine <laughs> pull out a bag of weed. <laughs> right? Yeah, that's right. true. So, yeah, weed was never an issue. But so then when I got out, I don't know why I even started smoking. I guess because I can. Right. I was allowed to. True. Probation said they didn't care. They kind of encouraged it a little bit. Right. So, and they, I was like, well, hell, I'll try it. So then I started and I was like, this is different. Like, it affected me different. So now I just like it. I just chill. And I think it helps me a lot. And my mom, she doesn't like it. She doesn't like it at all. She thinks that she thinks smoking marijuana is the same thing as smoking meth. Mm -hmm. And then she gets it confused and she'll tell people that I'm on meth. I'm like, Mom, please do not tell please people do that not I'm on meth. Like, do not say that to people. I I smoke well, you shouldn't smoke marijuana. I was like, it helps me. Look how I how look how far I've right. come. Right. And I think also uh, their educational marijuana was yeah. that it was a bad thing. Yeah. It was a gateway drug. Yeah. I mean, they literally made videos that made them smoke marijuana, you're going to kill people. Like that was their videos back <laughs> uh -huh. in the day. So that's the education that they have based on it, too. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that's changing. Yeah. Because I think it does have a lot of, of medical, you know, qualities. Mm -hmm. There's things that it does sit there and help. Yeah, it does. Like it does. Maybe it ain't so good on my lungs because <laughs> I have a lot of, you know, coughing and hacking going on. Yeah. But it, it, it chills me out, man. Yeah. I really like it. I enjoy it. It keeps it. It keeps me chilled and it. It keeps me satisfied i guess all right do you see that as an addiction um i don't know like right. i don't have to i guess maybe because i smoke every day Ish. me too so the, and the only reason i ask that question is but because, i don't wake up sick right <laughs> i don't right. have and to I get don't up destroy my life for it right I and i'm not steal. out stealing for it yes. i can afford you yes. know a couple grams a day or whatever all those things right there exactly yeah. so this morning i got up and normally i smoke within the first Right. 45 minutes of being right. up. That's just me, whether it's one hit or 10. Mm -hmm. So this morning I actually went to the gym, didn't smoke. Mm -hmm. Came back home and I, I just had this irritation about me. Right. That it's normally not there. Mm -hmm. Like, I just came in, I was grumpy. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like rrr, rrr. and then I, like, I've learned to identify these things mm -hmm. in my head when I have these, whatever, I feel right. a certain way. I'm like, why am I feeling this way? And yes. I, so I was like, I haven't smoked any weed. Yeah. That's yeah. why I'm feeling a little yeah. crazy. So I, did my little breakfast and I went and got a bowl, took a couple of hits, took a shot, whatever. But it just made me think about that in that way. Cause I, I guess I am a little dependent on weed yeah. to that extent, but it's not like it's hard to get. I don't destroy my life. Right. I, I'm, I'm okay with being called a pothead. Right. I'm not, I don't have a problem right. with that. <laughs> so I've accepted it. You can go into the store and buy it. Like, so yeah. Right. I, so I feel like it's okay. <laughs> and they're bringing the schedule down. Do you see where they're bringing the scheduling down from a three to a one to a three? So marijuana has always been a schedule one, right. which is meth, fentanyl, right, right, everything right, that's right. high abusive and high risk of overdose. Mm -hmm. They're going to drop it to a schedule three, oh, wow. which is more like Tylenol with codeine, things that are prescribable, okay. things that have medical qualities. So I think that's going to help a lot with legalization and stuff, okay. hopefully nationwide. Well, the cops really don't. I've been pulled over several times with weed and bowls, and they're just like, 
Mm-hmm. Whatever. <laughs> right. So they see it, smell uh-huh. it, and just yeah. let you go. Yeah. A couple times, matter of fact. Um, the one time they did take my bowl. Depends on the cop. But yeah, just depends on the cop. You're not supposed to smoke in a car, period. And I think the reason for that is so that it don't smell it. Yeah. It's like you're taking a break And you're not somewhere. supposed to drive and smoke either. Right. <laughs> and then, so did they give you a, a test? Did they like walk oh, no. around test or no. anything like that? Because no. mm-hmm. no. I think that's no. the only way they can check no. for sobriety. Yeah. They don't no, they think they nothing. can really no. do much else. They didn't care. <laughs> <laughs> They didn't but care, give them so. the options too, man. It's like, bro, if you can just let the world smoke pot, mm-hmm. and it would help. Oh yeah, ten percent of the mm-hmm. drug addicts to not be fentanyl addicts. Just yeah. let them smoke. Right. For fuck's sakes, just let them smoke. Just let them smoke. I agree totally. I love it. <laughs> it helps me. Mm-hmm. But today I'm happy. So. Right. <laughs> so I got a couple of questions. Oh gosh, ask. Jamie, what? These are, these are specific questions. Okay. You have the option to pass if you don't oh, like Lord. the question. Okay. I won't ask you all of them. I just want to pick a couple ones okay. that I feel like might stand out for you. Uh, and I feel like I've been rambling. No, no, dude, you've been great. <laughs> nice and concise. I like it. Um, So while you were in active addiction, did you ever watch someone overdose? Was you ever around oh, yeah. an overdose? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Several times I did. So um, it, like I feel like it kind of become normal. Yeah, it did. Answer. It did. It did, and and then it kind of came where we just carry Narcan. Okay. And then, hey, you do it first, and then if you fall out, I'll hit you, and then if you're okay, then I'll do it. Yeah, that's where it got to be. Mm, so you literally had that discussion sometimes, like. Oh yeah. Hmm. Well, I even had a friend that would call me on the phone, whenever he would um get high, so that because he would he fell out a lot, so that I could be on the phone while he did it in case he fell out, so I could call nine one one for him. Wow. And that was that became an everyday thing with him. So, yeah, it was normal for people to fall out. <laughs> but, huh. we, but we also brought them back. It was normal to just come back, bring them back. If you worked on them, they're coming back. That's so crazy. I've never heard of anybody putting things in place in case oh, yeah. they died that mm-hmm. way. Yeah, yeah, we did. Hmm. <laughs> Towards the end, I mean, back in the day, you didn't have to worry about that, really. Right. I mean, well, it was real. Fentanyl. It was real heroin. Mm-hmm. So we didn't really have to worry about that. That wasn't an issue. It just, in the year, you know, past, well, I haven't been, I haven't used heroin in, since um, June 17th of 2019. That was the last day I was when I got locked up. Mm-hmm. Easy to remember them lockup days. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, so that's the last time I used. But yeah, we had to do yeah, that a never lot. heard that before as far as like people calling and setting mm-hmm. things up. It's a great idea. Oh, yeah. Like if you're going to use, you know, you're going to use yeah. like. Because I had certain friends that fell out a lot. Like, so, yeah, he'd have hmm. to, I'd have to be on the phone. And if he didn't respond, which, but he always, I'd be like, David, David. Right, right, <laughs> right. Are you still there? Yeah. But, yeah. <sighs> okay. Okay, so if you could speak to someone right now that's in active addiction, they're going through it. You know, they're still in the same life we was in. What would you say to them? Um, gosh. It's hard to speak to somebody that's in active addiction because I feel like nothing I'm really going to say could help because nothing ever helped me that people said. But I really don't know what I would say. I tell them that life is so much better now. Like everything will come together. It just it falls into place as long as you and I have a friend, too, that's having a little bit. But he's clean. And I keep telling him, everything is going to fall into place. If you stay clean and you do what you're supposed to do, it's going to work out for you. It might be a rough start. It was a rough start for me, and it was. But everything just, it came together and it fell into place, and I'm so much happier. And I'm just, I'm comfortable with myself now, you know? Like, and I just, and if I had a friend that was getting high, I just, I feel sad for them. It breaks my heart because I know what they're going through. And I just, I would, Tell them I just want to help them, but I don't know. If, Every day's a struggle, but getting to this point's worth it. Yeah, it is it's definitely worth it, and that's what I tell everybody: just keep going, keep going. It's definitely worth it because I know a lot of people that's starting to get my friend Tony. She's starting. I'm just, it's worth it. Just keep going. It's all mm-hmm. gonna come together, and it is. It it's is. hard to turn that off though, because as addicts, it was like, for example, you did meth and mm-hmm. heroin. It's like you took one thing to go up, you took yeah. one thing to go down, you took one thing to go to sleep. Yeah, you took one thing for energy, and I think that we do that for so many years that when we get to the other side of it, we just want to turn things on and off. Yeah, 
like I just wanted things to be okay. Let me hit right. the okay button, but it don't right. work that way. It takes a while, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And then to get your energy back, because we took drugs to have energy. Mm -hmm. So then when you don't have any drugs for your energy, it's like, I just need energy. What am I going to do? But mostly you just got to get up, move around. Mm -hmm. Just get up, move. Keep moving. Think It'll come. If you go to any AA meeting, you see everybody drinking energy drinks. And yeah. Coffee, right? <laughs> everybody at AA meeting has got an energy yeah. drink or coffee in their yeah. hand. Because yeah. you're just lethargic after all mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Um, what would you say was the most important lesson that you learned during addiction? Oh, gosh. Most important lesson I learned. I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it is don't do it drugs. Is. I don't right, know. Right? Like, don't ever pick I mean, up. <laughs> that's the simple answer, right? Yeah. Be smart and don't start. Yeah. That I mean, I don't know how my brain went from, I was so against drugs. Like, I was the one upstairs being like, oh, y'all are crackheads. Everybody in the basement smoking crack. And I was like, you're crackheads. And then I turned out. So how I don't know how it went from that to being the perfect person to, to that. I'm still working on that, trying to figure out where yeah. everything, where it all happened. But I think that understanding the confusion in our mind is, like, one thing we try to do, but we never really comprehend, right? Right. Because, like, you, these things are going on in your head, and you're like, why? <laughs> why yeah. am I thinking this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, but I don't know about any lessons. I don't know. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I guess I couldn't specify one specific lesson either, but uh, I think one of the main things I would say is, like, trusting people, man. Yeah. Uh, like, I trusted some people that I thought would never do what they did to me, and yeah. they just shit right on me. Oh, yeah. So they could go home. Mm -hmm. Let me give Jamie six years so I can go home after six months. Mm. When you did ten times shit that I did. Right. I could never understand that. Like, I did my crimes. I wanted to get away from them, but mm -hmm. I never was going to put you in my spot. Right. Never going to snitch on any. That's just dirty shit, man. So... Trusting the wrong people. Oh, yeah. I've been set up four times. Right. Four different friends. Four distros. Mm -hmm. On four different drugs. All the my closest friends so did definitely this to me. Four different trust. ones. Each one of them got busted and, and was facing charges. Yes, and and wore wires on me. Sure mm -hmm. did. Four of them. Four different times. Hmm. People that I trusted. Trusted for years. One of them trusted him for a long time. He was even taking me to Baltimore to get the dope. But he was on methadone, so he wasn't using it. He was just taking us to get it. And then we get back, and then later he called and tells Raymond, hey, you know, I, I want to buy some. I said, Raymond, he don't even do the dope. He's on methadone. Something's not right. He, no, take it out there. Take it. I said, I'm telling you. He's setting us up. And I swear, I looked out the window, and I seen a car, and then I seen his car, and then I seen two cars behind him. I said, I'm telling you, the task force is out there. No, 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 go on out there. And so I went out there, and I served. And as soon as I got he, Raymond was supposed to go out. It was Raymond he was trying to get. It wasn't me. And then when I went in the car, he looked at me, and he was just, like, in shock. And I'm, like, looking at him. And then he's like, when are we going to Baltimore again? And I was like, I don't know. Whenever you take me. So then I sold to him. And then I look out the, I go back up and look out the window, and I see the car, the two cars go out. I see Scotty go out, and then I see him go out. And I was like, mark this day. I got a distro on this day, and I sure did. Sure, if I, eight months later, come out in the paper, distribution of heroin. Yeah, closest friend who was taking me there <laughs> to buy the heroin and then set me up. Yeah. Crazy. So trust. Yeah, trust is a lot, too. When you, in your addiction, you can't trust nobody. Nobody. For sure. For sure. Absolutely. 100% do not trust nobody. I still get calls sometimes. I, I've got a text recently that was like, hey, you want some Coke? Oh. Uh, I'm had, like, what? Yeah. I don't know you. I don't know who you are. Why I still get calls like this? that. I get still calls. People asking me if I can get them stuff. I got a call the other morning for somebody who I didn't think was using who texted me and was like, hey, can you get me any dope? I said, I've told mm. you once, and I'm going to tell you one more time. I am not using. Right. Okay. Ain't it? Lose my number, yeah. bro. It's, that's, that's the most thing I find disrespectful is when people at when they know you're clean and they want they trying to get you to use. Yeah, hey, they'll get you, you high faster than you'll get them clean. Yeah. 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 You have to have strong reserve in order to start helping people, I think, man. Yeah. Like uh, it it's hard. I've been around people that I've been trying to help and I've gotten high with them mm -hmm. for sure. Oh yeah. And then a couple of days later I I just like, what? Well, yeah. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. definitely not hard to fall back into that cycle. Be careful helping people out. Yeah. Yeah. For sure.
Yeah. So let me ask you this one. If you could go back to one specific time in your past and talk to yourself right now, you can go back. You're going to give her some advice. Here's what's getting ready to happen. Or here's what I don't want you to do. What would you say? And what would you go back to? Would you go back? I mean, I would go back and change all my, I mean, I ruined my kids' lives. <laughs> I mean, I didn't ruin them. My daughter is great. She's an awesome mother, wife. You know, she's in the Air Force. She lives in England. Um, I would, God, I don't know. I've changed everything. I would have to change everything. It would be so much. Was there a specific day you could kind of hone in on and say, from this decision right here, all of this happened? Um, what I remember is I remember taking some pain pills, and I don't know why, but then I remember starting to look for them. And then I didn't know anything about having a physical addiction. Like, I didn't mm. know you keep taking stuff like that, you're going to have a physical addiction. So I just kept taking them. So then... I don't know, Jamie. <laughs> I don't even know where right, I'm going right, with this. Right. That's like, okay, though. Like, uh, the first thing you said was talking about how you regret what happened with your kids. Your yeah, addiction ruined that. And that's did. the main answer I get. Because it's the same thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I am who I am because of everything that I went through. Mm -hmm. But if I could go back and change any part of it, I mm -hmm. would change what it did to my kids and my family. Yeah. Yeah, oh, definitely. Because I've been, I'm trying to build a relationship with my daughter. And I don't know. I don't want to be, uh, I don't know. It's a tough question, man. Because I feel like she doesn't trust me. Like, because I've, I've said these things for, you know, every time I've gotten out of jail, you know, mm. I'm going to change. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to get high. I'm going to show up. And I'm going to be. And I didn't. And I didn't for mm. about 25 years. For 25 years, I didn't show up. I wasn't there. And then now I guess it's hard for her to let me into her life and her kids' lives because she doesn't want me to disappoint her, my grandbabies, like I did her. Yeah. And I know I disappointed my son. I know I did. You know, I, could, I couldn't even be at my son's funeral. Yeah, you got to deal with that. Oh, I can't. Mm -mm. It's too hard. It, I can't deal it's with It's amazing that you're able to stay strong through that, though, because that's like one of the things that would send people back to using. Well, I knew it was either going to make me or break me. That's right. what I told everybody. I was like, it's going to make me or it's going to break me. And then they let me out on the, like I said, they let me out on that little thing. And I did while out. But what else? I mean, there was like nothing. Like I said, there was nothing else to do. The only thing was I was a dope man. So that's what I did. And then I went to prison. I had a lot of time, a lot of time to myself. A lot of time to think, a lot of changes that I know I needed to make. I'm getting older. My health's not the greatest. You know, I've lost 105 pounds in, like, basically a year. I don't know why. I'm trying to figure that out. So I got health things going on, too. So, I mean, it was time to straighten up and try to be there. So it's just getting hard to try. I don't know. I don't know where to start with her. I try to, like, send messages and try to... You know, I just don't know. I just don't want to feel like I'm failing. And I know I'm not. Like, I know I'm not. But to her, like I said, she's tough. Rebuilding relationships is some of the hardest things that we and go she's, through. And she's, and I've, re like, all my relationships, I've you know, are, are great with everybody. I've had, like, you and I have been friends for, what, 20, 30 plus years. Mm -hmm. Like, all my relationships are great. I've had long relationships. So I do have healthy relationships with people. I can. It's just my daughter. I'm trying to. I think a lot of that comes like our our main our, everything in, through our relationships yeah. has always been something to do with drugs. Yeah. But we maintain a relationship because I never ripped you off. You never ripped me off. Right. We always had good business. <laughs> right. Right. Because if you would have done me, right, then I would probably still hold that against you. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I did yeah. anybody. I mean, maybe once or twice. Maybe. Right, but most I'm you, sure I you did, either but... do good business in that world or mm -hmm. you don't. And right. I feel like I tried my best to do good business. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We never. People issues. over because no. I hated burning bridges. <laughs> yeah, I'm definitely sure I did, but yeah. Yeah, there's probably somebody that'll that'll watch that and be like, "You scumbag! You, <laughs> you did remember this, this day?" Yeah, right. It'll be in yeah. the comments. Jenny, you did this. Yes, Jamie, you, you did this. rip me off. Okay, I was high. I might We're have. different today. Just leave us alone. <laughs> We're sorry. We're clean and sober. It's great. Um. So if you understand this one or not, because I still don't either. Why do people look at us as addicts and they're like, 
Okay, just quit using. Like, <sighs> how many times was you told that? Just stop using, Jenny. Like, oh, what's yeah, the my problem? mom told me that all the time. It's why all in your head. Why it's couldn't nothing. you just quit? Why don't you just stop? I couldn't. I didn't want to be sick. And then when I did, you know, the methadone, and then I went to the Coke, and then I went to the meth. Like, I don't know. I don't know what clicked in my brain to get me to start using. When I hated it, I was totally against it. And then just something clicked, and I felt right in with everybody else that was getting high. And then I just started trying stuff. And it definitely does not discriminate. No, it definitely does not. But my mom and my sister does not understand addiction. My, mom, my sister's never even smoked weed. Mm -hmm. My mom doesn't. So I wasn't grown up around any of that. I had, a, you know, I had a great childhood, like I said. So my sister doesn't understand it. My mom doesn't understand it. So I think that I think that educating people is what we need. Yeah. I think that yeah. if we were teaching children, this is how your brain works. These are the things that could happen. Whatever. Mm -hmm. By showing them videos of people that have, you know, let's let's make them discuss it. Let's make them understand. Yeah. Do you think if you would have understood a little bit about addiction, it would have changed your choices? Um, probably. It probably would. Because you said you had no understanding no. that these pills was going to give you a no. physical addiction. No, never. So if you would have known that, maybe it would have changed. Maybe it would have. I mean, yeah. The drugs, like I said, was never an issue when I was a child. So, like, you only read about heroin. You only read about cocaine. And then, you know, you grow up and there it is. But mm -hmm. I don't. I just don't know why I made that choice to, to do that. Yeah, that's definitely one of the one things I want to help people understand i've gotten a few texts where mm -hmm. people uh chick hit me up and she said i understand more about addiction from watching these podcasts than i do from living with a methadone addict her grandma was a methadone addict mm -hmm. i think and been on methadone for all these years mm -hmm. and she never understood it and she said she understood more from a few episodes of this than oh, wow. living in it that's found that really interesting. Like, yeah. You know, I'm glad we're explaining things to a way to make people actually understand that yeah. we don't even understand. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. we're explaining we're explaining you that we don't even get it. Right. Yeah, because I can't even explain it to my mom and my sister. They just, they've seen me live the life and they just, they're just like, why don't you change? Why don't you stop? It's not that easy. No. I can't do it. I couldn't do it. Like being on the street, I couldn't do it. There's no way. Prison. It did it for me, and um, I was thankful to go to prison. Because the choices were taken. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And now I just make better choices because I don't want to go back to that. I mean, it took me years probably to get my head right. So the the couple years that they gave me, you know, it worked. It really worked. Yeah, that separation. I've said it before. It's like magnets. Two of them stuck together. But the further they get, they kind of mm -hmm. start pushing. And people, places, and things, obviously. Right. All my old crew was either dead in California or in jail. So I had nobody to even like hang out with mm -hmm. to even be a bad influence on me. Mm -hmm. So then when I got good influence people around me, my life changed. It changed a lot. You look good, man. I know. I feel good. I really feel good. Way. There's a glow to you that I've never seen before. I know. It's weird because when I see a lot of people, they're just, I don't know. I feel like I've changed. I don't know why. I've lost a lot of weight. I know that. And I feel like I look like a crackhead sometimes, and I'm really not on crack. Mm, <laughs> yeah, That's not it at all. No, no. I've been going to the doctor. They've been doing blood work and trying to figure it out because I lost, like I said, I went to the doctor last month. Within a month of going to the doctor, I lost 12 pounds. Within still a month. eating regular? No, everything not else really. Is, no. Uh, not hungry? No. No. Every, every, yeah, no. I just don't like to eat. <laughs> mm. I just don't like to. Yeah. But I've never, my, even out, even strung out, I've never been under 170 pounds. And now I'm at 140. Really? Yeah, and I'm not strung out. So maybe, the I don't know if it's the weed. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. But I mean, I feel good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's not making you feel bad. No. Like physically. No, no. So I don't know. I Absolutely. So, uh. What would you say is a message to people watching? Like, I think we kind of went over that, but if you had a message, mm, a mission know. statement. Mm, I'm not good with stuff like that, JB. Why do you that's ask okay. me questions? That's, uh, that's I fine. don't know. So before we close out, there anything else you want to say? Would you no. want to, you know what I mean? Something specific you want to say to everybody, anybody? Nothing. I mean, I don't know. I just want everybody to be happy. I just want everybody to be just, I don't know. Have a good life. I just want everybody to have good lives and get clean. <laughs> and if you need help, I'm here. Like, okay. I'm here. Don't take advantage of me. I have enough. You know, I have enough. But I like. I just want to help people. I really do. Just Where like can you. they find you at? Um, Facebook. Just hit me up on Facebook. Jennifer Franklin, Jennifer right? Jennifer Franklin. I'll put your name in the title. So yeah. I'll probably try to put something in the description. Yeah. 
um, yeah. so they can it, find it, it. It helps my heart. Like, it, it makes my heart feel good to help people. It really does. Yeah, it does. It does. I mean, I don't know if I helped anybody with rambling on, but no, I've you been did nervous. Well. You no, did well. I was nervous. Yeah. But. Well, y'all know what to do, man, with likes, comments, shares, all that stuff. <laughs> Let her know that she did well because yeah. she's sitting there saying she didn't do well. And I think she did well. Uh, I had a good time. I was really excited about doing it. I felt like this, I don't know, maybe if I could just help one person. Mm-hmm. Or if anybody just, I don't know, just needs help with addiction or whatever, I'm here. I've been through it. I've been through, I've been, what, 25, 30 years of it. I know all about it. And I also know how that. it is to get clean and 